It took me a long time to find my voice. I've always been that athlete that has been hyper-focused on performance and never really thought that anyone would care too much about anything else I had to say. But it was really the real life experiences that shifted me and um, kind of gave me the courage to speak up. I think it was especially having a daughter and I had a very complicated birth experience and my daughter spent um, time in the NICU. And I think it was just looking at her and, and thinking, you know, if I don't take on this fight, it's gonna be left to her generation. And I just, I felt like I couldn't do that. And you've participated in the White House's first ever Women Maternal Health Summit. Uh, you've testified before Congress. What are some of the more immediate things that can change or should change um, that can address some of the maternal health disparities that we see in the country. Yeah, I think we're really seeing that women of color, are, our pain is not believed. You know, um, we have to advocate for our own health. Um, so much implicit bias in the medical field and we really have to change that and we have to listen and believe women. And your experience, you've talked about how you feel um, you're privileged given you know, your role in, in the sports world, but um, have you spoken to other women of color who, as you said, who aren't heard and whose voices aren't heard or sometimes heard but dismissed? Yes, absolutely, and it's heartbreaking. You know, I feel so fortunate that I was able to walk out of the hospital with my family, but that's not the case for so many women. And, um, you know, you, you feel alone when you're going through the situation and connecting with so many different women who had so many different experiences really just made me want to bring awareness to the topic. And um, I think what's especially heartbreaking but also hopeful is so many of these complications and deaths are preventable. So we absolutely can do better and we need to. And can you tell us about the Power of She program that you're working with? Yeah, um, so when I did come back to competing with my daughter, I found that it was really difficult to be able to travel the world with a newborn, and things just weren't set up to be able to do that. I remember competing um, at World Championships. My daughter was eight months old, and on the national team, I was given a roommate, and so I was grateful that I had the resources to be able to bring support and help, but I thought about all the women trying to compete at the top level who were, aren't able to do that, and so we created a fund just to support women who, um, still believe their best performances are after they become a mother and just to come alongside of them so that they can still achieve. And when you think years ahead to when Cameron might consider starting her own family, um, how do you hope the world will have changed to make it easier for mothers and mothers-to-be? Yeah, I hope that she doesn't have to think twice about it. I hope that she's not scared to tell her boss, her employer, that she's pregnant, that it's a beautiful time, a beautiful experience for her. For me, it was terrifying. It was isolating. It was a time that should have been celebrated. It was really dark. And so I hope that her experience is everything but